Gam Burrell I'm from Big Spring, Texas, and I'm here with Phil Carroll. He's the incoming president for the Vietnam Security Police Association. Phil, thank you so very much for being with me. Well, this weekend is the 16th annual reunion of the Vietnam Security Police Association. Uh, we were all Vietnam War veterans who served in Vietnam or Thailand during the Vietnam War as Air Force Security Police or Sentry Dog Handlers. When we came home from that war, we weren't exactly welcomed by the country. Yes. Uh, people were against the war and they blamed it on the warriors, which is not happening today, thank heavens. Uh, Mainly in part to you guys, what you're doing and how you're supporting the troops today. Well, actually that's what some of today's troops have told us, that they feel like what we suffered and what we've done in response to that may have played a role in helping turn the public around so the public blames the war if they don't like it, but they don't blame the war. Right. What exactly is Air Force Security? Air Force Security Police, once upon a time the Air Police, before that the Army Air Corps Military Police, is the base defense arm of the Air Force. You can have airplanes and you can fly in airplanes in a war, but somebody has to defend the base, keep the enemy out, and that's us. And as point of fact, no Air Force base defended by security police has ever been overrun or conquered by an enemy in any war. We're proud of that. Oh, you should be. <laughs> oh, that is excellent. Well, also, too, you were a dog handler also? Yes. Dog handler is a subspecialty within security police or today within security forces. And, in fact, nowadays you have to be a fully qual qualified journeyman level security policeman to become a dog handler. Ten dog handlers. Here, all Air Force, okay. all security police, which includes canine and safe side, heavy weapons, law enforcement, perimeter security. Ex can you explain some of those? What's safe side? Safe side was a program uh, developed within the Air Force security police for getting off base, outside the perimeter, sweeping for the enemy to keep the enemy out of, say, mortar or rocket range of base. Regular security police typically work within the confines of the base. All right. And then what were the other? Oh, some of the other. Law enforcement is one specialty. Okay. And that's pretty much like normal, uh, say, community police or state police. Law enforcement duties. Uh, base defense is the basic duty related to security. Um, heavy weapons is a subspecialty within that. We do have. Uh, heavy vehicles, heavy weapons, mortars, machine guns, things like that, which typically one man alone on a perimeter post or a canine handler won't carry on this. Today, I have Sheila, She's the president of the Sisterhood of Vespa. And please tell us a little bit about this, Sheila. Well, the Sisterhood is wives, daughters, significant others of the members of Vietnam Security Police Association. We formed out of boredom really. <laughs> the ladies were coming to the reunions and there was nothing for them to do and we started out by just meeting and having a little coffee clutch and talking about what the men were going through and it developed into the, the whole organization where it's um, dealing with issues, veterans issues and the problems that some of the guys are having with uh, health problems and um, mental health problems. So we get and talk and we take care of each other so we can take care of them. Well, and I think a lot of people forgot that while the guys were away fighting, you gals were still home taking care of the families yes. and, and, and running the homes. And yeah. so you too have a bond with the other women. Yes. Yeah. Many of the women here are, were either sweethearts or wives of when the men were A lot of the guys did come home with a lot of problems. Yes, so they did. A lot of medical issues yeah. and a lot of health issues and a lot of, he was talking about the flashbacks and the nightmares. Post-traumatic stress disorder. All right. It's the flashbacks, it's the nightmares, it's the the sweats, um, the, the bad dreams, the um, shock and awe when they hear some, like a car backfiring and they duck or, you know, or they, you know, sometimes it, it even has to do with them being uh, unsocial or, or non-responsive to other people around them because of their 
intense fear of the enemy. Do you find out as being a wife and, and being involved in this that the, the reunions help them? Oh, definitely. Because they, they get to sit and talk to people that they can, that relate to them. They know what each other is going through. And uh, I think the happiest moment that I've ever seen my husband was not on our wedding day, <laughs> but at our very first reunion when he found his hooch mate. Oh. And um, after 40 years, found his hooch mate. And he was, he was like... <laughs> like I've never seen her. His eyes were beaming and his face was had a grin from ear to ear. William P. Piazza. Hope I said that right. Well, basically, okay. I spent right. 28 years in the Air Force as a Sky Cop. As a Sky yeah. Cop. Now, yeah. we were talking a little bit about that. You're going to have to explain okay. to us about Sky Cops. Uh, Sky Cop is what the other branches of the service first called us back in 1947 uh, because the Air Force on September the 18th became a separate branch. And they said, okay, all you guys in the military police and the Air Force are going to be sky cops. You're going to be up in the air directing traffic of the planes going through intersections, which is no way of doing it, but you know. That, uh, on my second tour, the three tours in Nam, my second tour I was stationed at Benoit Air Base at uh, Vietnam, uh, home of the third TAC fighter wing at the time. Uh, and we were there during the Tet 68 attack in Vietnam. Uh, my job at the time uh, was NCOIC of the resupply teams for the movement. And so the hero part came in? Well, on uh, 3 o'clock on the morning of the 31st of January, uh, we got rocketed attacked from the NBA and the VC. Then at 3.30, the ground attack started. And uh, the rocket attack basically was a cover for them moving in. Uh, on the east side of the base. They were actually supposed to hit us in three sectors. The east side, the west side, and the southeast side. Uh, the east side, they hit us, uh, got through the Quan Cons, which were the QC, the Vietnamese uh, security police. They knocked out two of their positions, and then they came in and they hit the Bunker Hill tent. Uh, that's where Captain Macy, Reginald Macy, who was our ops officer was, uh, he got killed and he received the uh, Air Force Cross for his actions there that night. Uh, he got killed by a B-40 rocket after it hit the Bunker Hill 10 and blew up. Bunker Hill 10 was a French bunker from World, back in the old days when the French had the, the uh, country. And it was a seven-sided bunker with uh, thick concrete, except the, the slots that you could either fire or look out. And uh, that was the thinnest and the weakest part of the bunker. And one of the round, the last round, matter of fact, hit it. They hit us with 13 rounds of uh, B-40 rockets. But uh, they were calling for the uh, one of the resupply teams to go there, and they couldn't because they were up the road at the MP checkpoint stuck there. So I was on the east, the northeast side, and I went ahead and uh, drove over, changed out the crew I had, and got Lee uh, Richard Lee, step sergeant, with me, and we went back down. And, came up from behind and brought them the flares because that's what they wanted. And then uh, we stayed there and then when Captain Maisie uh, got killed, uh, I took basically took over command of the bunker and stayed there until about six o'clock that evening. They gave oh. me the Silver Star. The Silver Star. Excellent. Do you carry that with you? Do you have no. it with you? It's no. at home? It's at home. It's, it's, on, it's in my right I Love stores. You All stuff. And then he put them all together and Put the, book. the book cost about $17 in some cents, but all the money doesn't go to Jackie. It goes to back into the association for each book that's sold. Oh. And you can only get them online, lulu.com. With me, I have Janet Sparkplug Wise. And Janet's father was Alvin Matthews Sarge. Janet, tell us a little bit about your father. We understand he's a combat, was a combat security police my dad was in the Air Force for 20 years. Uh, he served from 1960 to 1980. Retired as a Master Sergeant. Um, he did one tour of duty at Cameron Bay, Vietnam, 1971 and 72. Um, he was a security policeman his entire career in SAC, which is Strategic Air Command. He guarded the nuclear weapons uh, at the SAC bases, all stateside. Um, combat security policeman. Um, these are, the, these are the men who were outside the wire in Vietnam guarding bases. Um, a man on post with his weapon or a man on post with his dog if he was lucky. 
and these men learned, uh, they were basically the Air Force's infantry. They were, they, were, they were on the line. They were what was between the enemy and the Air Force base. And uh, when Daddy came back from Vietnam in 1972, he returned to Lackland and he taught at the Security Police Academy. And uh, when he came back from Vietnam, he said then, we can never, never send anyone else over there without their proper training. So he was one of the individuals who was very instrumental in establishing the criteria for training our current security forces. And uh, as I understand from our speaker at the reception, the United States Air Force security forces are requested by other branches of the military to help secure their bases. And we started off uh, kind of as a joke, bringing barbecue, which one of the members would call roadkill, and tease him about it. And uh, Daddy loved grilling and cooking, and a very hospitable man. We'd bring many, many pounds of barbecue. We would feed. Now, where did you all come from? Alabama. From Alabama. Alabama. We would we would travel in from Alabama, um, and we would load up and bring enough barbecue to feed everybody one night. Oh. And um, he loved it. He loved it. He was very hospitable, very welcoming. And one of the one of the sweetest stories that I've ever heard is that one of the best memories from some of the other members is how Daddy would put his hand on your shoulder and shake your hand and look at you and say, well, oh. and he meant it. Mm. You know, that was something that these guys didn't hear coming back and for them to be able to welcome each other home was, was big. Uh, but he loved every minute that we were ever at any reunion. And uh, I've learned Daddy, as they say, posted his last card mount on January 4th, 2008, which was on his birthday. We're never disappointed. Well, how did you get the nickname Spark Plug? I started working with the membership chairman, and the first time that we met actually in person was in Las Vegas. And we had all these ideas about what we should do about the membership and getting the membership cards out and letters out and communicating with the members, and especially the members who are not on the internet. And uh, Phil Carroll is credited with that. He told me, he said, you just have more energy than anybody I've ever met, and he started calling me Spark Plug. So, my, yeah, my signature line now on my email is, you know, daughter of black member number 127, friend of K9, you know, sisterhood vice president, spark plug. So, <laughs> it stuck, and even to the point now where some of my, some of my friends outside of the association call, you spark call me spark plug. So, that's cute. Yeah, that's a good one. And well, then I made, finally made the connection, spark plug, security policeman. Yes, my family members, friends, you know, our motto is we take care of those who take care of their own. And we support each other via email, you know, however we can. Um, in many cases, these guys came back with some issues. Um, the extent of their PTSD in some cases is pretty severe. And it takes a lot sometimes to understand that and to deal with that and to cope with that. And it's a big job. And, and I'm sure, you know, it's no secret that most of these guys have been exposed to Agent Orange and their health issues are great. And just having someone to go through life with them and assist them through the Veterans Administration, filing the claims, dealing with the health issues, um, it's a, it's a, it can be a full-time job. And it takes, I think, a very special person to support a veteran in any group. With, with the issues that come from serving their country and making these sacrifices. And so as a result of that, we do lend a lot of support to each other. Um, and by that, still continuing to support all of our uh, Just like to say to any Vietnam veteran, uh, 